for everyone's kind comments on my wedding update video. This is a particularly exciting vlog because it's all about our honeymoon on a narrowboat for a week and it worked out around £600, much cheaper than what we were expecting. But whoever you go with, we found the prices vary drastically. And hopefully this will give you an insight if you've never done it before and you fancy it. So we picked this up from Ellesmere Basin and the very first thing that I noticed about this boat was how warm and toasty it was. It made me feel like I could totally live on one of these. It felt like it had everything, but I didn't really film anything on our first day because we were just getting used to everything. But you can see here, I have not taken my wedding hair out and my eyelashes are still in. I just didn't want to go back to normal. And you can probably see there's a little bit of wobble on here. I never felt seasick the whole time, but getting off the boat and adjusting back into normal life, that's a totally different story. But our plan is to travel along the Ellesmere Canal and travel about 15 miles to Langothlin. I'm so sorry if I've said that wrong. And it took us probably about two days to get there. And because we were both new at this, we were taking things very slowly. And it's normally my now husband that does all the driving and stuff. But for some reason, I felt more natural at this straight away because the tiller at the back, if you angle it one way, the front goes in the opposite direction. So it does take a bit of getting used to. But our initial thoughts when we got on were, oh my god, this is going to be so boring, just stood at the back, hours on end driving, and what if it starts chucking it down? I hope he's alright. I think I'm too impatient. This is what I don't like. If I was going to be on a narrow, I'd rather hire someone so I could do, me a, do all the things. It's a waste of, I think this is a waste of time. The scenery is gorgeous, don't get me wrong. In areas you take for granted, like uh, Donny, I didn't even know Donny looks so beautiful from a canal. So my little technique is only move slightly, test it out, see where it's going. Like yeah, that's fine. Luckily, we escaped rain. I think all week. After a while, you just sort of get used to it and embrace the slower living and taking all of the nature. And it didn't feel too dissimilar to just walking along the canal. But I think I'd do it again despite having 10 days of sea legs right after. Also we picked this trip because it was recommended to do it in a week. If we had two weeks then we'd aim for a circular route and it just had two locks to tackle. You're cute though, aren't you? You make a lot of noise. Also pulling over was quite nerve wracking to start off with, but we soon learned how to go really slow. And I don't know whether Hans appreciated not being able to stretch his legs, even though we could see paths. So every now and again, we'd give him a walk. But when properly pulling up, we took it in turns to grab the middle rope, wrap it around our waist and pull it in. You've then got to get the back area pulled in and then the front and ties it with mooring pins. So this is our first lock and my husband took it on to crank it while I stayed on the boat and because the water isn't high enough on this side we're laying it in to raise the boat and then going through. I didn't really help much but here I am pushing the lock. Oh, and something that completely panicked us, and I never got it on film, was quite early on when we'd go under the bridges. The footpath is so close that Hans would just jump off, so we'd have to quickly pull over to urge him to get back on. And shortly after we'd come through here, we decided to pull up for the night. And we stopped at a place called St. Martin's. And if you are doing this route yourself, we popped to the local supermarket called Stan's Superstore. So we stopped up and we were surprised by how much storage this boat had. 
So on our return, we thought we'd do our first daily check and we were told this was a must to do. And it's underneath the tiller, we had to open this flap, twist this thing. If you've got any technical names for things, please comment below. Then there's a propeller just under here. So I had to unscrew that and then unslot it and take this out and just see if there's any twigs, carrier bags, random rubbish there that'd get tied around the propeller. Obviously you've got to make sure the engine is off. Some days we did find stuff and we were told to chuck it into the hedge and not back into the canal. And you put everything back, turn the engine on to see if any water is escaping. And that was it. No. No, it's all right. We picked this one because of the corner sofa layout. Didn't fancy two antisocial armchairs and it had a kitchenette, shower and a double bedroom. I think this was 48 feet long, which sounded terrifying, but now we realise actually we could probably handle longer. And this is where it got narrower and narrower. We're going towards an aqueduct as well. And it was quite nippy, so I needed my earmuffs on. We were also told never to stand at the side of the tiller, always in front. And it was also good manners to go really slowly, going past any boats moored up. But we were warned that there's some grumpy boaters and fishermen out there. So this is one of the aqueducts. I'll leave all of the Google map locations below if it helps. And we thought this looks steep looking down. Then for a totally different experience, we went through a really long tunnel, but my husband had to go and check to see if it was clear first before we went ahead. And I was driving the boat while he was walking along the side. And here's where we had a few visitors. Hans didn't know how to react. Oi. <laughs> what is it, boy? <laughs> that is awesome. And we're up. <laughs> oh, and apparently this road bridge was the toughest of them all. And we were told that every other day it was a good idea to fill the water. Had to make sure we didn't drop this key in. And I'd say it took about 15 minutes each time. But if you ran it dry, we were told it would take three hours to fill up completely. And now we're on the main aqueduct. Now I'm going to try and pronounce this Pont Casilti. Did I get that right? <laughs> I did cheat looking it up on a YouTube video. But I wouldn't want to fall off this because looking down it was really steep. driving mostly on the way back then, your turn. And from here on, all the canals felt so narrow. And we're also told that in the summertime, hundreds passed down here back and forth. And thankfully this was one of the quietest times. But now my husband's taking over and I'm having a bit of a break using the camera. Now we were forced to pull up around here because someone had parked so close to the bridge that it was a struggle to get through without knocking them. And we thought we'd just whip up some dinner. We typically had a bacon sarni, all bought from that St. Martin shop, and some soup to go with, but you can leave your John Smiths. It's a bit bitter. It also took longer to get there than coming back. Maybe that's us getting used to things, but we've now made it to the Langothlan Wharf Moorings. And we were very impressed that this was seven pound a night. It came with electric. You had to pay at the shop around the corner, put your ticket in your window. But this was the end of it. You couldn't go through there. It was all blocked off. And I think there was just one person parked up, but imagine this in the height of summer. I bet this is rammed. But if you're really stuck, you can actually pull up at some of the places en route with some signs saying you can stay there for a maximum of 48 hours. And this was very peaceful. We stayed here for two nights. And after a good night's sleep, we thought, let's just spend the day at Langothlan. We'd never been before. It was very quaint. We started getting our bikes ready for a cycle along the canal, that bit that you can't get with your boat. 
although there are special day out boats running. And we went as far as we could go, I believe, to the Horseshoe Falls. This was such a beautiful place that leads to the river alongside it. Wow, the zoom, Jesus. So I'm testing my selfie mode on my new G7X. I'm hoping you can hear this and the quality's all right. I know that um, it's quite on par with my DSLR, so uh, I'm very happy I bought this. But yeah, we are at Horseshoe Falls. Horseshoe Falls. Horseshoe Falls. And this is the start of the Shropshire Canal. Got to keep looking at the lens, not um, the selfie thing right above. And uh, it's so beautiful. It is the 20th of March. I think it's going to reach 16, 17 degrees today. Um, it's not going to be this great for the rest of the week, but next week while we're not here, it's scorching hot. So um, hopefully we'll get that weather at home as well. Hans is absolutely loving it. Um, he's probably relieved to be walking around not just on a boat because he has jumped off a couple of times while we're under bridges and we've just panicked thinking, oh my God, get back on because we've been trying to get used to um, pulling up. But after the first day, everything was fine. But hopefully we can um, go for a picnic, cobwebs all over my face and stop at a pub for a drink or something. Oh, the other thing I really like about my bike, I've just uh, bought it recently, is this Top Peak pannier and rack set. Absolutely love that because I can open this out uh, either side and it's so much better I think than having a backpack. It just evenly distributes the weight. Right, I'm going to go because I don't know if you could be able to hear this and I don't know where the microphone is on the camera. Right, see you in a bit. <laughs> Come on, boy. Come on. Come on. Oh, we saw. We got you. And then we cycled all the way to Trevor where we'd been the day before and had a pub lunch at the Telford Inn. This is when I could feel sea legs happening because while we were on firm ground, it felt like everything was swaying, which was very bizarre. And then took the bikes back so we could walk into Langothlan. But when we got back, one of our boat neighbors gave us their old inflatable canoes. That were quick, wasn't it? <laughs> Is that your bum bit? <laughs> that does look cool. I hope so. I don't want it falling in. Do you like it? <coughs> Hans is telling you off, he's like, this is not right. <laughs> hey! <coughs> And for tea, we had a Welsh tradition called an oggy, although it looks like a Cornish pasty to me. But I'd be interested to know what is the difference between the two. The next morning, we had to start heading back. You could only stay there for two nights maximum. So we're going through Trevor again. Then the aqueduct. Back through that tunnel. Another little aqueduct. A funny boat and a cute dog but as a little treat we'd spotted a spa going out so we thought we'd pay a visit on the way back he's jumped in to get try and get a shoe you silly doggy hey you've been in the water four times on this holiday so we have just moored up at a place called lion keys a luxury hotel and spa i'm on google maps and we are halfway i think from here Langollen to Ellesmere where our Blackwater Marina is. We've got to drop this off and we're going to go to the spa itself um, for some treatments. Um, not very long because obviously we've got hands and then we're going to come back and stay here for the night. This is a free complimentary um, mooring if you stay, if you go to the spa and stuff. So hopefully it's alright. And then we're going to come back and have a roast dinner that we bought in St. Martin's. Anyway, I'm going to go. Got my backpack ready and I'll uh, check you out in a bit. Check you out in a bit. See you in a bit. Oh, it's cold. It's very cold. Oh, 
when we came back to the lock as well, I did panic because it started to let a load of water onto the boat and I think this needed patching up. And on our last night, we'd gone past Ellesmere Basin just to go for another dog walk. But this was pretty much the end of our holiday. Ugh. I think that's it. Although Hans wrongly accused another chap. <laughs> oh, come on, Hans. So that's it for this one. If you have any questions about narrow boating, feel free to comment below and I'll do my best to answer. But as this isn't my usual kind of video, I'm gonna give a shout out to two great vloggers that I watch often, and that is Robbie Cummings Voyage Logs. Hi, I'm Robbie. I've been living on a narrow boat for almost two years now, and I have been through my fair share of bad weather. Whoa! Oh, Happy summer, guys! <laughs> oh. And David's vlogs at Cruising the Cut. There is a phrase, only mad dogs and Englishmen go out in the midday sun. Well, it is now midday, and I've got seven more locks to do, so I'm definitely going to press on. And there they are, but in fact it was eight more. I must have been hallucinating in the sunshine. It really is much easier to just open one gate. Saves all that dodgy leaping over the lock. So if you do go over there and watch and subscribe, feel free to tell them I told you to stop by. So as usual, if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And hopefully I'll see you in my next one. Thanks for watching. Bye.